Nayeli Vieira turns one year old today, but she's spending her birthday in the hospital. Unlike most babies, Nayeli was born with a cleft lip and palate, a birth defect that will affect her life in many ways. It's not a cold. This is a, a big condition. Hey, cutie. This is Nayeli. Are you ready to go in now? Mommy's coming with you? Yeah. Yeah. This was the scene two days ago. Nayeli, headed into the operating room in Floating Hospital for Children at Tufts Medical Center in Boston, where she would undergo cleft palate surgery. And by the time she reached five months old, Nayeli already had her lip repaired. Carol Vieira explains what her daughter's face looked like as a newborn. On her affected side, it almost looked like she didn't have a nostril. It was completely stretched out flat. And then directly below that, there was just a big gap. You could go straight in where her nostril was and straight back. And when she would open her mouth to cry, there was just sort of this large cavern. She hasn't tried solid foods as much as most babies her age because her cleft was so large that whenever we gave her solid food, it would sort of get stuck up in the hole. Uh, you know, feeding issues. Dr. Andrew Scott, a pediatric otolaryngologist at Floating Hospital for Children at Tufts Medical Center in Boston, says that cleft lip and palate occur in about 1 in 600 to 1 in 1,000 births. Many doctors still can't pinpoint the root of the cause. No one is exactly sure of what causes cleft lip and palate. Nayeli was born with a unilateral complete cleft lip and palate, but that's just one of many different types of cleft. And it can be unilateral, so just on one side, or bilateral involving both of those. Uh, and you can have incomplete on one side, complete on the other, bilateral, complete, any combination thereof. Dr. Scott is part of the cleft team of specialists who perform Nayeli's lip and palate repairs. The way that uh, cleft lip and palate repair is done is that you do the lip first. First comes the NAM, or what the cleft team calls nasal alveolar molding, a device used to reshape the lip, nose, and gum line prior to lip surgery. We um, take an impression of the gum line and then a model is made. And then from that model, a custom retainer-like prosthesis is made that will clip onto the child's gums. And then that gets affixed to the face itself. And so it slowly over time, we'll move the segments of the gum line together. To the best of my knowledge, the only two programs in New England that are using nasal alveolar molding are um, in Rhode Island at Hasbro and uh, at Tufts. Dr. Scott explains what happened to a middle-aged woman when he fixed her palate. We did that primarily to help her be more intelligible, more understandable with her speech. Um, and it worked a little bit, but not great. And the reason why is because she's already wired herself for speech, and we knew that but we wanted to, to, to help her as best we could. The other issue was that she was very frustrated with the fact that every time she ate, she would chew and food would go into her nose, and that was socially very upsetting to her. Do you see your sippy? It's hard to crawl like this. This was just the first stage of several repairs that Nayeli will have to have to her palate. She'll probably have another one when she's three or four to lengthen her palate. Adolescence is always a difficult time, but for Nayeli, growing up may prove to be that much more difficult. One of our biggest concerns is, is the social impact, because I know it's going to be a challenge for her um, if she sounds funny and just People judge so much on your looks. Even though her lip has healed up really well, her nose still looks funny. And um, we certainly already have instances where, you know, people will look at her funny or, um, or kids will ask questions. And at some point when she begins to understand that, you know, it's a big concern for us that she has enough self-confidence that she's able to address those. It's tough for the parents when they're wheeling the baby down the street and someone looks in and sees this baby with a huge hole in his face. And children can be cruel during the school years and that then will lead to children being ostracized. Um, sometimes they'll speak differently and, and they'll be teased about that. Uh, what will also be a source of um, self-consciousness for these children oftentimes are their teeth. The majority of cleft team is just pediatric dentistry. It really is. This is the last thing you've put in your mouth for four weeks. I'm here at the Floating Hospital for Children at Tufts Medical Center in Boston, where Nayeli's parents take her for surgeries and appointments. But constant traveling from their home in Martha's Vineyard has been a sacrifice of time and money. We were figuring that it was costing us about $800 a month because we were going back and forth weekly. 
and between our boat and our gas and our um, food and there were times when we would have two visits in a row so we would have to spend the night in a hotel even when we were only going for the day our boat reservations off in the morning would usually be at 9 30 so we had to leave our house by nine and we wouldn't usually get home until 8 30 or 9 at, at night because of the boat schedule we would both come back just drained. Yet traveling isn't the only expense facing the Vieiras. Nayeli's future surgeries could get costly. Nayeli will probably see us every year until she's 18. She's got a lot of work ahead of her. But that's not all. Dentistry is not covered by insurance almost all the time. The other issue is the nose. And why aren't they covered? Well, you know, that's plastic surgery, that's cosmetic. We are really, really fortunate. We have what is considered a Cadillac plan of insurance. But not everyone is as lucky. Me, I struggle with it. I just don't understand. Adrienne Musto is fighting to get better coverage for her son's cleft-related surgeries and doesn't agree with most insurance company policies. How can they deny you for a medically necessary procedure? Medically necessary, not, not cosmetic, not optional medically necessary. None of this is cosmetic. Dr. Scott says the cost for rhinoplasty for a paying customer is around $5,000 and dental procedures anywhere from $3,000 to $8,000 and if the patient needs both you could be looking at $13,000 not covered and that doesn't even include teeth implants. Right now I mean we, we, we are saving for four kids although we have three. Adrienne isn't just fighting for her own child. She's fighting for every child affected by this defect in Massachusetts. And that fight has taken her all the way to the state house. It is a supported piece of legislation. They recognize that, you know, this is, these are children we're asking to, to fix it. You know, these are not cosmetic procedures. You know, these are children who are born, you know, by, by fate. <laughs> that same fate is what led Nayeli to Floating Hospital for Children at Tufts Medical Center, a place where the Vieiras know their daughter is in good hands. Because she was born in a special way, she gets the attention of all these extra people who are here to help her, you know, and um, that all really clearly love her and care about her too and check in on her regularly and, and um, get really excited to see her. And so if she sees it in that positive way, then um, that can help with her whole, her whole psychological development. But for some parents, like Mari Blakey, fixing the emotional scars requires more than just visits to the doctor. When Mari found out her son would be born with a cleft lip and palate, she joined and became the director of the Foundation for Faces of Children. He couldn't ask for a better fit for me, because I don't think he'd find a cause that's closer to my heart. The Brookline-based nonprofit organization is designed to improve the quality of life for cleft children and their families. Really bring that parent perspective to them to reassure them that they aren't alone and that the children will go on and have like a wonderful quality of life and be enormously successful. As part of that mission, the group offers support through newsletters, online brochures, cleft palate informational videos, Facebook, and even provides college scholarships to cleft-affected teenagers in New England. It really becomes like a family condition, you know, like it affects us all so deeply. A family condition the Vieiras know all too well. My baby's getting ready to go to bed. Your baby's getting ready to go to bed? Yeah. When I would be washing out her mouth, Alyssa would go and get her dolls and, and take a washcloth and pretend to be washing out her doll's mouth on the inside, and then she would pretend that the doll was crying. Wow, wow, wow. Vieira's current focus is on Nayeli's recovery and development. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Good job. The, the main things for her in the next few, you know, six months are going to be just keeping an eye on the ear tubes and making sure that they're open and they're working and everything looks good. And then um, it would just be a question of whether we'd have to revise the palate from a speech standpoint. That's one of our speech therapy tricks. Can I do it? Just because Nayeli was born with this condition, the Vieiras don't want it to define her as she grows up. I hope that we're always able to raise her with enough self-confidence that she'll be proud of herself in many, many, many ways. For now, Nayeli just likes being the birthday girl. <laughs> Yay!